afternoon and welcome to today's uh, Serious Information Security Seminar brought to you from Purdue University. Our guest today is John Ortiz. John is currently a Senior Computer Engineering Consultant for SRA International. In this position, he researches information, hiding techniques, and steganography software, assesses the security and feasibility of advanced DOD security applications, examines and deobfuscates <laughs> malware, and develops forensic tools. Prior to SRA, he spent five years at General Dynamics developing source code and tra uh, network traffic analysis techniques and software. In a second role, Mr. Ortiz teaches computer science and electrical engineering courses at University of Texas at San Antonio. John? All right, thank you very much. How's everybody doing today? Well, it's nasty weather out there. It's a little warmer down in uh, Texas. So uh, anyway, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so which one of these pictures has some hidden data? Which one? And why do, why do you say that? Oh, you don't have a microphone back there? Why do you say that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, you, you have 50% chance of guessing right, and, and you did guess right. But let's look at it closer. The little bit of darker uh, doesn't help. And here's a closer look. And can you see any difference transitioning on, on that screen? It's hard to see on this screen. Picture one, picture two. You might be able to see a small difference, uh, if at all. You have to look very close, compare it side by side. But just because there's a difference doesn't mean one is wrong and the other is right could easily adjust the contrast and, and brighten it a little bit. Here's what's hiding in one of the pictures. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> yeah, so that, that picture is actually embedded in one of the other pictures. And we'll talk about that technique uh, a little bit later on. So for today, here's the agenda. Uh, the, the attention getter, that was uh, just uh, done. I need, to, I need to have the, at least for the first few slides, the slide actually appear up there. Thank you. A um, little bit of word about uh, SRA, company I work for. A um, little bit about me, just very briefly. Uh, Joel told you some things. I'll, I'll share a few other things. And then there's other things I won't share. Uh, remember, it's steganography, not stenography. A lot of people uh, call me up about my class and say, well, what kind of writing instruments do you need? Uh, no, it's, it's not stenography. It's steganography. Uh, we will talk a little bit about hiding in the least significant bit, but from what I understand, most of you are pretty familiar with that. Uh, but then we'll do a couple more advanced techniques, uh, bit plane complexity segmentation, a little more sophisticated uh, substitution technique. We'll talk about uh, high capacity and uh, JPEG images, another technique. And then uh, if we have time, I know time's an issue here, we'll uh, talk about echo hiding in audio. And then if we still have time, which I doubt, but uh, we'll try, I, I can do some demonstrations. Certainly, I'm uh, willing to share some of the programs that I've done, uh, so you can kind of play with it on your own if you're interested. You can email me, or make, we can make it available, or, or something like that. And then any questions, comments, and you can ask questions anytime. Okay, if something comes up. All right, SRA. I'm not going to read through all that. Uh, basically, we do a lot of work in the intelligence and information community. They do a lot of work in a lot of other areas too, in health and so forth. Um, we're all over the globe. Okay, so pretty much anywhere you want to live, uh, SRA has uh, some type of office there. Okay? Most of the offices are in uh, Virginia. We have a small office down in Texas. That's where I work. And uh, I've been working with them for about three years, and I enjoy it. Some of you are going to graduate soon. If you want to uh, give me your card or send a resume or something, feel free. You know, I'll take the referral bonus, trust me. <laughs> All right, so I graduated from Rose Hallman in 1988. I'm sure all of you have heard of that. Um, joined the Air Force as a communications officer, got to do lots of things. Uh, teach a networking class was one. Automate a database, or not automate a database, but automate a process using a database. And planning unit picnics. That was really one of my favorite tasks there. Uh, the commander told me, if you can't even plan a unit picnic, then okay, we can't trust you to do something important. So, because uh, I complained about it, I wanted to do, you know, I just graduated, I've got a degree in engineering and I'm planning a picnic. Yeah. 
Uh, then I went to the Air Force Institute of Technology in uh, Wright pa or near Wright Patterson Air Force Base and got a couple master's degrees in uh, computer engineering and electrical engineering. So I have a very broad background. I don't have a, a lot of very specific background. It went from VLSI to computer architecture to software engineering, communications. So covered a lot of stuff there. Then I joined uh, Trident, which was bought by Viridian, which was bought by General Dynamics. And Joel already read some of these things, so I'll, I'll skip that. Did some neat projects. Uh, then I joined RABA, and which was bought by SRA. So I'm kind of waiting for uh, the, the third purchase to take place here. It, it could happen someday. Um, and basically doing the same kind of work for a different company. So I, I've, one of the most interesting was to analyze some uh, DOD security programs. They, they had several companies that developed different programs to provide different types of security. And I was able to analyze those and see you know, what their weaknesses were, if they could be broken, and so forth. So I've had a lot of fun projects uh, since I've been there, and I continue to have fun projects. It's a very interesting type of work in uh, computer security. Also, at the same time, I started teaching at uh, University of Texas in San Antonio. Um, actually, there wasn't a job posting. I just sent them my resume and said I'd like to teach, and I had a few years' experience, and uh, they interviewed me and let me teach. And once I did okay, then I asked them to develop a steganography class. And that's kind of what this uh, presentation is based on, a few elements of the class. But I teach an entire semester of steganography. All right. Information hiding. That's the branch of computer science that deals with concealing the existence of information. Uh, steganography is one subtopic under information hiding. There's also watermarking, which is more prevalent, actually, because of the large commercial interest. Uh, covert channels, not, not quite so prevalent. And then uh, anonymity. And I find uh, very little research, at least relatively speaking, on anonymity versus uh, information, uh, I'm sorry, versus uh, steganography or watermarking, especially. Lots of disciplines covered. Digital signal processing, probably being the biggest discipline required for steganography, but data compression, uh, the human uh, visual and auditory systems are important because it's how we perceive the information that matters. Uh, data compression, discrete math, information theory. How many of you all are familiar with information theory? It's kind of curious. All right, a few of you. So you know what entropy is, right? And not from thermodynamics class. Um, and, and so all these uh, science and disciplines come together uh, in producing uh, steganographic uh, content. It literally means covered writing. You've heard of a stegosaurus before. Uh, that's a covered dinosaur. The steganography is covered writing. That's where the term comes from. Uh, and then it borrows some terms from cryptography. Okay, uh, plain text is used in cryptography. You can use that in uh, steganography. Uh, cover text, that's the cover file. Now, that's something you don't have any analogous to in uh, cryptography, is a cover file. Because cryptography has the plain text and the cipher text, and that's it. Well, steganography, you have this third file. That's the cover file. And the cover file does make a difference, as we'll see shortly. And then, of course, you have the uh, stego text or stego object. That's the cover file mixed with the embedded data. Concept of hiding is not new. Okay, uh, one of my favorite stories was reading about how the Greeks would shave the head of a slave and uh, write a message on the head, wait for the hair to grow back, and then send them off. Some of us uh, don't make quite as good uh, message carriers as others, <laughs> which is true in uh, steganography. Some cover files are not good as uh, others. Uh, World War I, World War II, the Civil War, which is not up here. They use some quilt patterns. Um, in the 80s, there was somebody... Uh, leaking cabinet documents in Margaret Thatcher's cabinet. And so she had the word processes adjusted so each one would put a different fingerprint on it so then they could identify the leaker. So the idea is not new. Uh, what's new is that in the last, well, it's not quite that new now, but it's been around since 1995. Of course, uh, maybe to the undergraduate students, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess they've been born since 1995, but they, they weren't very old when that started around. But when the internet started to take off, that's when research uh, really started to kick up in steganography. At about that time, there was probably a couple hundred papers published. Uh, I checked two years ago, tried to download as many as I could. I got about 2,500, and that was two years ago. So I'm sure there's many more and more published uh, since then. Uh, main principles of cryptography also apply to steganography. Okay, this idea of security by obscurity. People always want to use it. Uh, it always fails. But the idea is that the security should be in the key, not in the algorithm. You have to make the broad assumption 